Hi, my name is Will Terry and this is video number three, Character Design, in my series, How to Illustrate Children's Books. Okay, Character Design, this is some fun stuff. We're going to start with uh, my book, The Three Little Gators by Helen Ketterman. And one of the first things that I do when I want to make a character for a book is, you know, I write down different traits. I read through the text and I write down, you know, this, you know, a list. So we've got personality. This, this, this big bottom boar is a bully. Um, and in his description, there really isn't much. We know that he's bigger than the little gators. He looks like a boar. He's got a big butt and he breaks things with his butt. So we're going to start there. And then what I do is I, I look at uh, reference. So I'll go on, on Google. It, I mean, it used to be much harder. Uh, you used to have to go to the library or, or buy a book or something. But now you've got Google. It's so easy. Get reference. Look at uh, pictures of the character or the animal or the, the human that you want to do. And then what I do is I make a list. I make a list of all the things that are that character that, that you have to have. So... We got mean eyes, uh, a snout. We got tusks, hooves, floppy ears, scruffy hair, and, and a curly tail. Um, and then I might even draw some of those those little uh, features out. And and it's like if I add those features to practically any shape, I'm going to end up with a character that looks like a boar. Okay. And this goes for any animal or any human character. Okay. So here I'm just drawing a little little boar from reference there, just trying to get my mind wrapped around it. Now, I want my boar to be funnier and friendlier. Even though he's mean and he's a bully, I want him to be more accessible to children. So I'm going to round things out. I'm going to make him fatter. Um, I'm going to give him little tiny squatty legs. I'm going to try to make him funny, yet we still know he's a bully. Give him some goofy teeth. Um, and this is what I ended up with. You know, this is uh, These are the sketches... Uh, that I use for the book. Um, I, the, this represents uh, probably a fifth of the sketches that I had. So let's look at this character in action. Here he is in the story, and he's got, you know, we can see the character there. There's his big butt on the right, and he's using it to knock down the house. That's one of his abilities. Um, and then he's chasing, you don't see, he's off camera here. Here's his eye looking in the window, kind of a mean eye. And here he is again, the big butt breaking down things, smashing down a house. And here he is running. And finally, we see him um, using his butt to try to knock down the stone house. And then he's inching down the chimney. All the time, I'm showing that butt. And then finally, he lands on the grill and gets grill stripes burned into him. So that's my big bottom board character. Okay, the next character that I want to talk about is uh, my little monkey from the book that I wrote, Monkey and Croc. And again, one of the first things that I do is I go to go to look at reference. Um, you know, it's actually a myth that artists uh, draw without using reference um, because they either have looked at reference in their life and learned how to draw something and then memorize that reference um, or they have to look at reference in order to draw something. But but nobody kind of is born knowing how to draw different things. Everybody everybody has looked at um, at the physical world and basically learns you know how to how to mimic that. So you know here's some some different different monkeys that I looked at and what I really wanted in my character was a really cute character. You know I wanted a, the monkey to look like a young monkey. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of draw um, some proportions for the human form, because when we when we stylize and when we when we draw characters, even if they're animals, we can borrow from our knowledge of the human form. Now these are really rough sketches, but basically the little kid on the left is four heads high. He's basically a toddler. Um, then you have a teenager that is about six heads high. Uh, female proportions are um, about seven heads high. And this is give or take. These are these are kind of ideal proportions. And then a man is eight heads high. And by taking that, by taking what you know there, you, you know that the the child is 
you know, only four heads high, so that the size of the head to the body is is huge compared to the man. So, if, no, taking that knowledge, I can start to draw this this monkey, and I want him to look young. So I'm going to make his head size really large, like a child in proportion to the body, right? And so here's here's some sketches that I that I've done um, with this little monkey, and my monkey is only about three heads high. So I'm exaggerating that. Um, that's that proportion. If you've ever noticed that, you know, when you see a toddler walking around, especially when they're first learning how to walk, it's really interesting because the head almost leads the body, you know, um, as they walk, if their head gets kind of off to one side, they tend to walk that direction. The head is so big in proportion to their body, right? Okay. And then finally, um, you know, here is our little monkey character in, in the book. And, you know, I gave him long arms, the tail, basically looking at the reference and saying, you know, what is a monkey? What characteristics does a monkey have? Making that list and then, and then starting to draw. Okay, this, this exercise is, is what I call, you know, what is a cat? And, and basically what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, you know, kind of what we've already talked about is what, what is a list of characteristics that make an animal look like a cat or what makes a cat look like a cat. So you've got kind of some, some slanted eyes with a, with a little, uh, you know, the, the pupil is, is definitely more of a vertical line, you know, a triangle nose, kind of a, a little, um, the, you know, the, then the rest of their mouth is kind of a series of balls. You got whiskers, ears, um, some fur and a long wiggly tail, right? So that, to me, that's what makes up a cat from, from my observations. So then if I take those characteristics, I can apply them to any shaped body or head. So if I make a big, big circle, big oval, um, that, that animal can look like anything. Then when I put the triangle ears on, you know, uh, or triangle nose and the, the little mouth, little eyes, all of a sudden it starts to look like a cat. Put that that curly tail on there, and you've got a fat cat, right? Um, here's some whiskers. Okay, what if I take a uh, a different shape, a completely different shape than that that fat oval? Okay, we'll make a really thin shape. Now, could that be turned into a cat? Let's put some legs on it. Okay, some skinny little legs. Right now, that this animal could be anything. But then you add the tail. Now you know it's an animal. Put the triangle ears on, triangle nose. Put some eyes in there. And all of a sudden, you've got this skinny little cat. Okay? So when we're talking about making a character, this is what we're talking about is, is finding out those key characteristics that make that character look like it does okay now what about if we want to anthropomorphize an animal so here's a here's a body shape um a real highly stylized body this is this doesn't look like a you know an academic drawing at all of a human form but right now this could be anything it could be a human it could be an animal okay so let's put a head on there and put those triangle ears and all of a sudden we've got a cat a cat with human characteristics, a cat that can walk upright. And we're going to need a tail in there. And there we go. Okay. Now, what if I take some completely different shapes for a head, even a square? Okay. What would happen if we apply the characteristics to just the head on each one of these? Can each one of these shapes look like a cat? A lot of times I'll have students ask me, well, how do you know how to draw things? You know, and it's, it's not so much knowing, um, you know, how to draw something as it is being observant and saying and asking yourself questions. You know, when you look at animals, say, what are the distinguishing features of that animal? Sometimes it's body proportion. Sometimes it's body shape. Sometimes it's facial features. Sometimes it's both. Um, but I mean, even on a square, as soon as you start to put those 
those characteristics down, it'll start to look like a cat. Now, the reason I don't want to show you this is because you can design your own characters just by um, putting the, the right characteristics on any shape at all. Um, the body shape, the head shape, often doesn't matter as much as the few key characteristics. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you with a kind of a three-quarter view of just a head. Now, this again, this head shape could be anything. You know, right now it's goofy. Put some goofy teeth on there. It could be anything at all. But when we start to add, the again, the few characteristics, now it becomes a cat. Okay? So it's not so much knowing how to draw a cat um, as it is being observant and saying what features really make a cat a cat. Now this one's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more realistic of, of a cat. Right now, that body shape could be anything. You know, it could be a dog. That could be a dog body. But we're going to go ahead and make it a cat again. Those little triangle ears really tell a lot. And shape really matters. And, and, and that's the point that I want to drive home is just the simple shapes that you use can really do a lot to tell the story of the character and, and what kind of character that you're dealing with. Okay. Um, so now let's look at um, some images that I've done just to kind of finish this video up and you can kind of see that I'm taking some some pretty geometric shapes um, and just just by combining them in a certain way I can come up with certain characters um, so anyway here's a tree that's that's you know you just put a face on a tree and all of a sudden it's animated you know a, a, here we have a frog and you know you just just put a few of the the uh, characteristics that a frog has, and you can you can make your own frog, a frog that no one has ever seen before. Hey, did you like what you saw? You've only seen half the video. Come to my website URL right there. Hi, I'm Will Terry, and I'm a children's book illustrator. I teach a picture book class at my local university. I've taken all the material from that class and put it in video form, and now I put it on my website so you can access it online. There are seven videos in my series. Design your book, storytelling with pictures, character design, illustration design, painting and rendering, working with color, and success in the marketplace, one of my favorites. I've been an illustrator for 19 years, and in that time I've taught at two universities and multiple conferences. And my books have won a bunch of awards, the North Carolina Children's Book Award, the Arizona Young Reader's Choice Award, the Florida Children's Book Award, the Texas 2x2 Reading List, and more. Also, I was chosen to be the CTA Illustrator for 2010 and 2011. Come to my website and watch a full 24-minute video on character design for free. If you like what you see, you can buy the other six. What could be more fun than illustrating children's books?